This is getting very serious, and few are realizing it. End times. Have you ever wondered who the ultimate deceiver will be? The one who will challenge the very essence of truth and righteousness? In this video, we would be covering the complete truth about the Antichrist, the mysterious figure prophesied to rise and oppose everything God in the end times. The role of the Antichrist in the end times. The Bible provides a detailed description of the Antichrist's role in the end times, particularly during the tribulation period. Understanding this role helps us to remain vigilant and steadfast in our faith. The Antichrist will emerge as a central figure of opposition to God and his followers during the tribulation period. He is seen as a deceitful ruler who rises against power, initially promising peace, but ultimately leading to widespread destruction and persecution. The tribulation period will be a time of great suffering and divine wrath, and the Antichrist will fully reveal himself during the Great Tribulation. Let no one in any way deceive you or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first, that is, the Great Rebellion, the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and so insolently above every so-called god or object of worship, so that he actually enters and takes his seat in the temple of God, publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 4 During this time, the Antichrist will perform miraculous signs to deceive many, proclaim himself to be God, and enforce a global worship system centered on himself. What is the abomination of desolation mentioned in Matthew 24 verse 15? The abomination of desolation is a significant prophecy originally found in the book of Daniel and later mentioned by Jesus in Matthew. This is about a time that will come when the Antichrist will disrespect the newly built temple in Jerusalem. So when you see the abomination of desolation, the appalling sacrilege that astonishes and makes desolate, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Matthew 24 verse 15 this act is when the Antichrist places an idol or does disrespectful things in the temple, which is a serious wrongdoing against God, and starts the period of the Great Tribulation. The Bible says, And he will enter into a binding and irrevocable covenant with the many for one week, seven years. But in the middle of the week he will stop the sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until the complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who causes the horror. Daniel 9 verse 27 This act shows the Antichrist's worst offense against God, making things ready for more severe punishment and judgment from heaven. How is the Antichrist's role in the end times described in Revelation? In the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is clearly described as the beast rising out of the sea. And the dragon, Satan, stood on the sandy shore of the sea. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, with ten horns and seven heads, and on his horn were ten royal crowns, diadems and on his heads were blasphemous names. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. I saw one of his heads which seemed to have a fatal wound, but this fatal wound was healed, and the entire earth followed after the beast in amazement. 
They fell down and worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like as great as the beast, and who is able to wage war against him? Revelation 13 verses 1 to 4 This passage shows the Antichrist as a beast empowered by Satan, exercising authority over the entire world. He demands worship and persecutes those who refuse to comply. The Antichrist will perform deceptive miracles, blaspheme God and oppress the saints, representing a time of unprecedented evil and suffering. Revelation 13 verses 5 to 7 continues, And the beast was given a mouth, the power of speech, uttering great things and arrogant and blasphemous words, and he was given freedom and authority to act and to do as he pleased for forty-two months, three and a half years. And he opened his mouth to speak blasphemies, abusive speech, slander, against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and those who live in heaven. He was also permitted to wage war against the saints, God's people, and to overcome them, and authority and power over every tribe and people and language and nation. The Antichrist's rule will end when Christ defeats him in his second coming. And the beast, Antichrist, was seized and overpowered, and with him the false prophet who in his presence had performed amazing signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were hurled alive into the lake of fire which blazes with brimstone. Revelation 19 verse 20 The Antichrist's role in the end times is central to the events of the tribulation period. His rise to power, acts of deception, and ultimate defeat by Christ are all part of the prophetic timeline. Understanding these events helps us remain watchful and faithful holding on to the promise of Christ's return and ultimate victory. What is the mark of the beast? We all have certain numbers that are special to us. It could be your favorite sports player's number or the date you were born. But there's a special number in the Bible's book of Revelation that has fascinated people for many years. And this is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast appears in Revelation the Mark of the Beast is referred to as the Mark of the Beast because it is brought into being by a man who is referred to as the Beast. Revelation is full of graphical language. Through the continued use of symbols, we can visualize what would otherwise be ungraspable. It cannot be too strongly emphasized that this is intended to help our understanding, not hinder it. Six seals and six trumpets are over. The very last series of disasters is about to happen. It will be the worst for the world. Evil powers will gain a tighter grip on society than ever before, though their hold is about to be broken. In this section, three individuals come together to form an alliance with the goal of ruling the world. Among them is a being of angelic origin and nature, referred to as the Great Dragon and Ancient Serpent, commonly known as Satan or the Devil. The other two are human in origin and nature, beasts, otherwise known as the Antichrist and the False Prophet. Together they form a kind of unholy trinity, a ghastly mimicry of God, Christ and the Holy Spirit. Revelation shows us the economic strategy of the first beast and the second beast, Revelation 13 verses 16 to 17 Also he compels all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast, and that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. He makes everyone get a mark. This mark will be given to everyone living under the control of the beast and his helper. You need this mark to take part in the economy, and without it, you won't be able to buy or sell anything. 
Only those who have a special number on a visible part of their body, like their hand or forehead, will be allowed to trade. This number will be given only to those who worship the Empire. The number 666 is the secret name of the ruler. We have already talked about what it means. Until he comes, when his identity will be very clear, trying to figure it out is pointless guessing. One thing is clear, he will not be perfect in any way. The word karagma in ancient Greek means mark, but it's not usually used for people. Some people think it's a symbolic mark, but the idea of a real mark needed for buying or selling is possible and could make sense. The technology to give people a mark that lets them buy and sell in the electronic economy already exists. There are many ways that it could happen, and such programs are proposed and tested constantly. A mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Satan is not a creative being. All he can do is imitate God. We are not surprised to find that this too is a satanic parody of something God will do. It imitates God's mark upon his people. Revelation 7 verses 3 to 4 saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. The number of the beast, Revelation 13 verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. The usage of numbers as symbols is very common. The book of Revelation has a large number of sevens, including stars, lampstands, lamps, seals, trumpets, and bowls. It is the round number of the Bible, the complete, the perfect figure. Twelve is associated with the old people of God, their tribes and the new, their apostles. Twenty-four brings them together. One thousand is the largest number. Six hundred and sixty-six is the one that captures attention. It is made up of sixes, a figure that always alludes to the inability of humans to achieve the seven that represents complete perfection. It is used here as a clue to the identity of the last world dictator before Jesus reigns for a thousand years, in Latin, a millennium. It is significant that 666 is the total of all the Roman numerals except one. However, attempting to identify him based on this figure will be fruitless until his physical presence makes it very evident. Using this method, Many candidates for Antichrist have been suggested, such as Napoleon, Mussolini, Stalin, and so forth. The term Mark has no special biblical usage apart from its association with the beast. The Greek term Karagma was most commonly used for imprints on documents or coins. Karagma is well attested to have been the imperial seal of the Roman Empire used on official documents during the 1st and 2nd centuries. In addition to its use in Revelation, the term karagma appears only once in the New Testament, specifically in Acts 17 verse 29, where it refers to an artistic image. Does the mark of the beast exist today? Many of us wonder if the mark of the beast in Revelation 13 will be a high-tech tattoo or the plan of a billionaire. The Bible makes it very clear what the mark is and when it will happen. To begin, there is a strict timing requirement for the mark. Scripture teaches that the mark of the beast will appear at a particular time and place in history. But at this point in time, we have not yet arrived at that time or place. The reason why the mark of the beast is referred to as the mark of the beast is because it is brought into being by a man who is referred to as the beast. So until the Antichrist is ruling the entire earth, there can be no mark. And since the Bible says the beast and his mark do not appear on earth until the midpoint of the seven-year tribulation, then the mark cannot exist in any form prior to the tribulation. 
Therefore, any suggestion that a mark of the beast exists today in any form is merely a forewarning.